On a crisp morning in 1982, deep within the unforgiving Siberian wilderness, sat the largest natural gas pipeline ever built, ready to pump the heart of Soviet energy to Western Europe. Then, without warning, a sudden earth-shattering explosion tore through the Siberian silence. This was the largest non-nuclear explosion in human history, a deliberate act that not only sent the pipeline up in flames, but also destroyed the Soviet Union's chances to win the Cold War. During the Cold War, the world was split by different beliefs and a tough race for power in areas like space, technology, and especially energy. In this tense environment, a major discovery in 1966 changed energy politics. In the remote Siberian Urengoy gas field lay one of the largest natural gas reserves ever found, a significant boon for the Soviet Union. Eager to assert its strength and secure its economic future, the Soviet Union saw this as an opportunity to not only meet its own energy needs, but also to become a key energy supplier to Western Europe. This strategic move aimed to enhance its influence in Western Europe, altering the balance of power and introducing a new dimension to the Cold War's geopolitical chess game. The Soviet Union faced huge challenges in building the massive pipeline over 4,000 kilometers long through Siberia's tough, frozen land. This huge project needed a lot of resources and the latest technology. So the Soviet Union looked to Western countries for help, finding many companies ready to work for a big payout even though this meant working with Cold War rivals. The US, wary of the Soviet Union's expanding influence in Europe through energy dependence, viewed the construction of the pipeline with concern. The involvement of Western technology and contractors in this Soviet project presented both a risk and a strategic opening for the US. The crackdown on protesters and the establishment of martial law in Poland in 1981 provided the US with a pretext to act leading to the imposition of sanctions aimed at halting the pipeline's progress. The sanctions didn't work as well as the U.S. hoped. Many European countries chose to ignore them because they wanted the cheap energy Russia offered, letting the project continue. The Soviet Union got most of what they needed, but they couldn't get the advanced computer software required to run the pipeline. This software was only available from American and Canadian companies, which weren't allowed to sell it because of the sanctions. As the Americans grew desperately afraid of the Russians stealing the critical software, a shadowy figure emerged from the depths of espionage's clandestine world. Enter Vladimir Vitrov, known in hushed tones as Agent Farewell, poised to tip the scales in a high-stakes game of intelligence and deception. What secrets would he unveil? And at what cost? The fate of nations hung in the balance, teetering on the edge of his next move. Agent Farewell's espionage mission kicked off in Paris in 1965, where he posed as an engineer. However, he soon caught the eye of French intelligence, which led to his forced return to Moscow. His time in Montreal was equally problematic, attracting unwanted attention that prompted the KGB to pull him back again. Frustrated with being stuck in a desk job at Department T, analyzing the latest technology, Vitrov decided it was time for payback against the system that had demoted him. In 1981, fueled by a mix of revenge and a clever plan to leverage his connections with French intelligence, Vetrov launched into a secret mission. He made contact with French operatives in Moscow, starting a risky venture of espionage. Collaborating with Patrick Ferran and his wife, he leaked over 4,000 documents. These weren't just any documents. They included information on Soviet agents and a shopping list of sought-after Western technology, crucially featuring the advanced pipeline control software highly coveted by the U.S. By becoming a double agent, Vetrov's actions risked not only his own life, but also had the potential to dramatically alter the course of the Cold War, channeling critical intelligence directly to the CIA. Upon obtaining this list, the CIA director William Casey orchestrated a cunning plot within the CIA that would turn the tables on the Soviet Union's technological ambitions. Under Casey's direction, the CIA adopted the role of a covert, personal shopper for the Soviets, ostensibly fulfilling the items listed on Vetrov's shopping list. However, there was a twist. The technology and machinery procured by the CIA would be intentionally flawed or defective. In collaboration with American and Canadian companies, the CIA engineered and supplied the Soviet Union with equipment that was designed to fail or malfunction. 
The CIA, with its precise intelligence of which company would be the target for the coveted software, swiftly coordinated with their Canadian counterparts. Together, they approached the targeted Canadian company, briefing them on the impending security breach and persuading them to participate in a scheme that would turn the tables on the Soviets. The plan was to embed malicious code within the software, a digital time bomb programmed to disrupt the pipeline known as a Trojan horse. A Trojan horse in the realm of computer science is a malicious program that misleads users of its true intent. In this case, the Trojan was programmed to awaken months after installation, suddenly instructing the pipeline's control systems to ramp up the gas pressure to catastrophic levels. This digital time bomb was set to trigger an explosion that would not only destroy the pipeline, but also send a clear message to the Soviet Union about the risks of underestimating their adversaries. The operation required meticulous planning and execution. The compromised software, stored on a floppy disk as was customary for the era, was left seemingly vulnerable to theft. The KGB agent, as anticipated, broke into the company's premises, stole the disk, and unwittingly carried back to Siberia the very tool of their undoing. By January 1982, just weeks after the CIA had first acted on information from the shopping list, the stage was set. The stolen software, now a Trojan horse lying dormant, was installed into the computer systems controlling the natural gas pressure flows of the Urungoi Pomery pipeline. For months, the software operated as expected, managing the flow of gas through the heart of the pipeline. Then, in the summer of 1982, the Trojan horse activated. In an instant, the pipeline's pressure skyrocketed, leading to an explosion of such magnitude that it was detected from space. The blast was estimated to be equivalent to a three kiloton explosion, making it the most monumental non-nuclear explosion ever observed from orbit. The aftermath was shrouded in secrecy. The Soviet Union, caught in a compromising position, could hardly protest or seek retribution for the sabotage without admitting to the theft of the software. The incident remained a closely guarded secret for years, its details emerging only through whispers in intelligence circles and was eventually exposed by the tell-all novel of Thomas Reed. After the massive Siberian pipeline explosion, Vladimir Vetrov, the spy behind it, faced severe consequences. Disillusioned with his country, he had leaked vital secrets to the West, including the crucial shopping list. But soon, the espionage world he navigated turned against him. Captured by Soviet authorities, Vetrov, once a valuable asset to the West, was quickly tried and labeled a traitor at home. His trial was hidden from the public, highlighting the dangers of crossing the Soviet regime, despite his tragic end. In the West, Vetrov is remembered as a hero. Thanks for diving into this incredible story with us. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe to Tech Disasters for more stories where technology meets unexpected turns. Your support lets us bring more stories like this to light. See you in the next video.